I also want to address the problems in terminology and language, which is uh, the word LGBTQIA plus movement, that is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, asexual, or alliance plus, which itself is a modern word. And a country which never had a women president which kind of uh, enslaved most of the indigenous people, which behaves like mother of human rights sometime in the world. Um, of course, the term evolved from that particular country. Also, the more number of homophobic and transphobic crimes are recorded there. So, The problem here is that there is, a, there is a million dollar economy and the economic powerhouse attached to the modern activisms, which is not constructive or productive at all, which never questioned the discrimination of these sexual and gender minorities within their own community. Even, especially, you know, the modern notions of, uh, so, uh, when it comes to the social stratification or family as a structure, we believe men and women make a family. So when a child or uh, when a person is identifying themselves as a non-binary person, it will disturb the structure of family people are worrying. No, it is not. It never disturbed the structure of family for thousands and thousands and thousands of years in Bharat. But where does the very kind of binary notion about the family comes in. So, starting from the Mughal era, during the Mughal Empire, a number of pre-existing Delhi Sultanate laws were combined into Fatwa Alamgiri, mandating a common set of punishments for uh, zina, unlawful intercourse. These could include 50 lashes for a slave, 100 for infidel or death by stoning a Muslim. Fatwa Alamgiri is a com compilation of Islamic law created at instance of uh, the Mughal Empire Aurangzeb in uh, 17th century. But starting from Delhi Sultanate, that is uh, 206 to 1526, from Mughal Empire, 1526 to 1542, 1555 to 1857, most of their notions of family and sex arrive from the post-Old Testament texts, the Abrahamic values which they carried on with them was very heteronormative. Not only them, but the Goa Inquisition especially from 1561 to 1774, then till 1820, the Goa Inquisition prosecuted the, capit prosecuted the capital crime for uh, homosexuality, also prosecuted the indigenous gender minorities and banned their rituals and festivals and more. So this led to destabilization of the community, indigenous community structure in India. I was explaining like what are the different communities and the worship they had in different regions and the gender specific rituals and gods for them. 
So this destabilized the entire community. The Christian laws, which came out of the influence of uh, Thomas Aquinas, whether it is Section 377 of the IPC, Indian Penal Code, found a place in uh, 1860, prior to enactment of Criminal Tribes Act, that criminalized all penal and non-vaginal sexual act between persons, including anal sex and oral sex, at a time when transgender persons were also typically associated with prescribed sexual practices. So it, even before the Goa Inquisition, it, I mean like in between that, if you see people like Robert De Nobly or the Jesuit priests, uh, the way they defined all this, I mean, they tried to put everything in a box, from God to what not, everything. The way you should pee, the way you should e you eat, the way you should walk, the way you should talk, the way the men and women need to clothe. In Bharatiya tradition, it is all about whether it is a woman or men or indigenous gender minority. If the person is with the jnana, the supreme wisdom, people will bow in front of them. They don't bother about what gender they belong to. So it's all about the person who have that supreme wisdom, who have the thirst to attain the supreme Brahman. They can be Nastikas, they can be Astikas, they can be Anastikas, or anything. All have a space in this Bharat Jnana Rajya. And especially the, one of the very cruel act passed by the, the colonial era was Criminal Tribes Act in 1871, 1876, 1911, and 1924. This law deemed the entire community of indigenous gender minorities are innately criminal and addicted to the systematic commission of non-bilable offenses. The act provided for the registration, surveillance, and control of certain criminal tribes, so-called criminal tribes, and UNEX, and UNEX is a derogatory term, but they referred because it's a biblical term, goes back to the English Bible of Bishop's Bible or King James version of the Bible. Because inak means castrated men, but uh, the etymological sense of the word inak may refer to neither men nor women in the actual Bible. So, and had, this particular law had penalized Inex and they, they penalized the indigenous gender minorities who were registered and appeared to be dressed or ornamented like a woman in public street or place. Such persons were also arrested without warrant and sentenced to imprisonment for up to three years of fine or both. So, this is what the British had done. And Theresa May, in the recent Commonwealth uh, meeting, she said like, oh, we feel so bad about it. Like, this cannot cover up the crime what happened from these countries. The whole of the community is struggling in the whole Asia because IPC 377 was passed as a law in all the colonial regions, I mean, whatever country which was under the British, most, like all the commonwealth realms were, still even now they have this law, which were not abolished, I mean not the British, but the places where they ruled, including India. So the worst crime of British is killing of Alan Matheson Turing, who was father of computer science. In 1954, a computer scientist and a brilliant mathematician, Alan Turing, died after bitting into an apple laced with cyanide. 
a real version of a kind of Snow White <laughs> and the poisoned apple, I can say. But by breaking the German military secret codes created using the famous Enigma mission, Turing helped British intelligence stay one step ahead of Hitler. Because of that, the whole of the, um, the Second World War came to an end. So Turing is an English computer scientist, mathematician, logician, cryptoanalyst, philosopher, and theoretical biologist. Turing was highly influential in development of theoretical computer science, providing a formalization of the concepts of algorithm, computation, with Turing machine, which can be considered a model of general purpose of computer. Turing is widely considered to be the father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence was murdered by the British government. And the very first trans men, the modern trans men, a female to male, a female who transitioned to be a male, who underwent the fallophasty in the early 50s was Lawrence Michael Dillion. She changed her name after she fled to India as Lopsang Jivaka, a Tibetan, uh, Sanskritized Tibetan name. Lopsang Jivaka is a renowned trans scholar, physician, philosopher, author. He is the first white European man, trans, trans man, ordained in Tibetan Buddhist tradition. He is the first person to ever undergo female to male fallophasty. He was forced to flee to India from British. And now, British is talking about the human rights of LGBTQIA people. And now, the America is talking about the human rights of LGBTIA people. And now the Europe is talking about the rights of LGBTIA people. And using LGBTI movement to measure, to use it as a very kind of measurement for the development of the country in the globalized world is absurd. We have a Canadian leader who support the LGBTI community at the same time who is completely okay with selling weapons to Saudi Arabia to destroy Yemen. So the community is highly politicized and very less people really worried about the cause in the community. Even when you come to the Indian region, we have people like Subramanyam Swami or uh, Baba Ramdev. They are not okay with being LGBT person, especially they are not okay with being LGB. They are okay with hijras or the indigenous gender minorities. But we do have people like Arun Jaitley to Vanati Srinivasan to Harshavardhan ji to a lot of ministers who are openly supporting the, the sexual and gender minorities cause. But Subramanyam Swami, I'm sure that being a Hindu, he will never and ever, he will agree with killing a newborn uh, you know, just because a baby is intersexed or just because a person is gay, he will not be okay with killing them. He may call it as a disease or something. But this cannot happen with uh, people from other traditions. Very less people from other traditions ac did accept their uh, uh, community members. In 1977, Shakuntala Devi published The World of Homosexuals. Probably the very first of its kind book in India, which contained the int interviews of different uh, 
LGB community people, that is lesbian, gay, bisexuals. In 1990s, Geeti Dadhani set up Saki, a women's helpline and lesbian resource center, which facilitated cross-country networking between queer women. And uh, in 1996, Geeti Dadhani published Sakyani, Lesbian Desire in Ancient and Modern India. In it, she explores the love between women in ancient India, also looking at what has become a female sexuality in contemporary times. Geeti is independent volunteer in Mission 272 and member of BJP. And she is a lesbian who campaigned for Narendra Modi, BJP election in 2014 at Delhi. Not many people know that a lesbian campaign for <laughs> Modi. <laughs> and Geeti is also one of the founder of NAS Foundation and her friend Ashok Rao Kavi, formerly Brahmachari of Sri Ramakrishna Mutt and Mission, came out of the Abe and he started the Hums of a Trust, the very first LGBTQIA organization, along with Saki, the very first lesbian organization in India. So later, NAS Foundation was like handed over to uh, Anjali Gopalan, and she is one of the founder of NAS Foundation too, which is which challenged the uh, validity of uh, the section IPC 377, that is uh, uh, like having homosexuality or kind of uh, the very kind of argument about what is natural sex and what is unnatural sex, defined by Thomas Aquinas. So in 1994, communist activist Vimala Faruqi, member of National Federation of Indian Women, Communist Party of India's Women's Front, wrote a letter to then Prime Minister P. V. Narasimha Rao to stop a gay men's conference in Mumbai. And we have uh, Fire Politics, the movie Fire from Deepa Mehta. And also, the way she named the characters in that film, not many lesbian friends of mine accepted it as a kind of authentic lesbian movie too. Because, uh, see, the way they projected the relationship between the women, and as well as the, the name, because um, um, Bal Thakreji was uh, kind of... Uh, uh, you know, criticizing the naming of the characters. It is not about the movies, uh, the, whether it's being lesbian or not at all. It's about, you know, if, if Deepa Mehta is going to name the character as uh, Fatima and Khatija, definitely the Muslim community will not. Uh, so people love to trigger the indigenous traditions which are super inclusive. They never question the very kind of non-inclusive Abrahamic traditions. And they give caste color in recent days left because the whole community is patronized by the, the left policy, especially the communist, periarist ideologies. Russia is a communist country, was a communist country, and still they believe in their ideologies which they derive from their um, super Marx or Lenin or communist or gods. And Chinese, China, of course, the very kind of Maoism and communism is like two sides of one coin. So then, what about the LGBT community there? Especially, you know, people like Karunanadi, of course, initially, I believe Karunanadi was very open minded I mean, like, whether he's open-minded or not, to portray himself as a liberal person, he supported, I mean, he came up with the Transgender Welfare Board. That is a good thing happened in Tamil Nadu in whole India to support this indigenous gender minorities. But that was completely occupied by only trans women. 
trans women in the sense like there are trans men too but when the newspapers and the, especially the journalists when they just call transgender people and tra uh, among in transgender community trans men are very less visible and no one bothered about it so especially the recent transgender bill which came up in the you know uh, like a lot of people were protesting against it because this bill it's not very clear about, uh, was not, earlier it was not very clear about what is sex, what is sexual orientation, what is gender identities. It, it clubbed up all identities in one, they were about to pass it. But the good thing about the bill was that this is the first bill during, the, during Narendra Modi's tenure which, which prohibited the forced sex work and begging. So before that, we'd never had such an, uh, you know, policy. But if they're prohibiting the forced sex work and begging, they need to also provide alternative livelihood for them. So there comes, you know, the people here who believe in the Bharatiya Dharma and tradition need to invest themselves in these communities to develop them to integrate them with the dharmic values again because churches are working hard on this especially the protestant church in tamil nadu has appointed a trans women pastor they have a transgender priest <laughs> the same church which condemned homosexuality have a transgender priest from george soros and his Open Society Foundation to the billion dollar cost. Being a Jew, he is an anti-Semitic. And most of the American Jewish organization or namesake Jewish and anti-Semitic. And they support Palestine and most of the modern left uh, LGBT people support Palestine, but Israel is the most liberal country which recognized the LGBTQIA movements before, uh, you know, um, 40 plus years where uh, gay and lesbians can openly serve in their army and have a family. No one bothers about it. It's, it's see, the, the recent transgender bill is with a lot of politics. I mean, the periarism and regional separatists, the vested forces have, you know, came in. We have a person called Nartaki Natarajan, who is an individual who was awarded uh, the Sagitya Kala Academy Award during Congress regime. She travels around the globe. She is from Tamil Nadu. She is from my place, Madurai. No one discriminates her. I mean, we are everyone, whether it is men or women, they are struggling hard to create their own opportunities. My sex identity, my sexual orientation and my gender identity is just one aspect of my life, but that's not all about my life. But when people kind of trying to sell this identity and exploit this identity and commercialize this identity for their own purpose. People and some people, especially periarists, you know, they they tell that they don't have house to stay, but they use Apple laptops and uh, Dolce, we are Dolce and Gabbana suits. Where the money is coming from? Church has invested so much in this in the recent days. We have Church of Sweden, we have Protestant churches, even the Catholic churches are coming with their own notions about this, which simply persecuted the indigenous gender minorities and LGBT community for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Now, trying to project themselves as all inclusive organization, especially in Europe, you know, 
not many people are going to church and like that is not a very religious space because we have a problem what nationalism means to India is completely different to what nationalism means to uh, the European and American nations. And, and what, especially, you know, um, what nationalism means to Europe is completely different from what nationalism means in India. And also, What right and left politics in the America or Europe is different from what, because in India we don't have real left, we don't have real right. Here we have people who are anti-indigenous tradition and we have people who want to protect the tradition. So, they cannot simply equate it with their own Western academic. I mean, like, I don't want to even go with the word Western because I believe a lot of Western Hindus are more Hindus than the Indian Hindus. And sadly, our own Bharatiya traditional people are, uh, you know, most of the great uh, Samrajyas, the dynasty is fallen because of the people from this own land. Not just because someone invaded too, because um, of their selfishness, because of, you know, uh, there are reasons. So, these modern notions in the LGBTQIA activisms are deconstructing the dharmic values and traditions and false narrations have been created by um, Donigers, Brian children, and the people who are endorsed by the Donigers and Pollocks. We have uh, writers who belittle the great traditional values, Bharatiya, uh, you know, epics and the characters in the epics to some cartoon character or superficial heroes. For selling books, you know, and these writers don't even know Sanskrit, and they don't belong to any tradition. They never went and you know, like, sat under any any great traditional philosophies under the gurus. Or so the problem is that you know, and we have. Uh, uh, the problem is that altogether suddenly a big money is poured in from some place. Like um, maybe, you know, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, for, uh, if a school, uh, for example, uh, if, uh, if a person runs a school and the school have like 200 employees or like 150 employees, or at least 100 or 80 employees, that, that's a big school, quite big school then. So most of the uh, big and you know LGBTQA organizations, of course, especially in India, they have like, you know, field workers who are like not less than 50 to 60. So overall their employees rate will be more than 150 to 200 in some places. It's equal to running a multinational company. So who is putting the money in, where the money is coming from? And going back to Deepa Mehta, you know, um, Sancharam. Sancharam is a Malayalam lesbian movie. When Sancharam was released, no one protested against it. But why people protested against fire? Because Deepa Mehta want to kind of project the very kind of character names by offending the Hindu dharmic values, being a you know, person who belongs to this community, I cannot accept that too. And the modern Islamic inclu inclusiveness, which is rising with the you know, uh, kind of gay imams and lesbian imams, because these gay imams cannot live in Saudi Arabia. These gay imams cannot live in uh, Middle East. These people go to France or different parts of the Europe 
or America. See, we need to accept the theological perspectives in Islam and Christianity or against LGBTQIA community. That is the truth. Accept it. The problem is we don't want to accept that. And we want to create a very kind of comfortable notions to accommodate these people because Bharatiya tradition, all the Sat Darshanas, because it is all about Darshanas, it's all about philosophy here. As I earlier said, it's all about philosophy. So going back, coming back, the, the best example I can say is shaming the, the Hindu Dharmic tradition is you know, there are like some filmmakers who want to unnecessarily pull in the Hindu characters and, uh, you know, because they want to trigger the community, especially this director is from, uh, you know, Kerala. And uh, he was like, oh, my film was banned by the CBFC, CBFC, he was like yelling, but Sancharam was released. It's the same Malayalam movie from Kerala. Who, who, like, there were like more than three queer movies released in Kerala without ban. These three movies were like with explicit content about lesbian, gay, and transgender issues. No one banned it. Like, even the government never banned movies. They were like asking for kind of corrections. You know, it's not... The problem is, these people don't know what is philosophy, what is the indigenous tradition mean. With their own western notions, they approach all this. They're like, posters call for death sentence under section 377 and warns of terror against the community as homosexuality is against Tamil culture. This was a poster circulated by the Indian National League, INL party, in Tamil Nadu. Is it a, are we living in Iraq or Iran? And we have this Modi government, during this tenure, in 2017, we have this government, a historical judgment by the Indian Apex Court, reads as, privacy includes, at its core, the preservation of the personal intimacies, the sanctity of family life, marriage, procreation, and the home, unsexual orientation. Unsexual orientation. We, we want to underline the word sexual orientation because it includes LGBTQIA community. And the most important thing, this, this is a judgment, I mean like, this is a ma remarks from Justice D.Y. Chandrachud. And this is a historic verdict, which says that sexual orientation is your rights. And the government is like not going to every house and, uh, you know, and setting up a camera on viewing whom, or see, whom you are sleeping and having sex with. Or whom you are loving. They never bothers about it. We are living in a society where any means of perversion should be prohibited in a public space. Whether it is between men and women, or whether it is between men and men, or women and women. Perversion in the sense that it is not complete to uh, it is not completely okay to have sex in the road or public bathrooms so is it completely okay then something is wrong with the people then and if they think life is all about having sex with someone in this great Bharatiya tradition my great grandparents never watched a pornography to perform what they should to know what they should perform on the bed And at the same time, because of the very kind of colonial notions, we Hindus caught up with our own superficial and uh, superstitious belief that we need to come out of it. 
See, the best way to kind of counterpart certain things to protect the indigenous gender minorities and the narrations and the traditions and also to create a healthy younger generation is to teach them before a Hindu child, before any children know, knows about, you know, what is India in the map, the, 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 new, uh, the child should know what is what in their body. We teach rocket science, but our parents fail to teach about what is what in their own body. Because they need to openly talk about puberty to, you know, like, because they were the very kind of uh, hypocritical, conservative, this communists and these, uh, you know, kind of anti-Hindu forces which are joining together and coming and saying that, oh, this is body shaming and all that. So we have the responsibility to educate the younger generation. So most importantly, uh, from the UN to the regional organizations, uh, the agenda of the LGBTQIA, you know, like uh, the very kind of the United Nations to the regional organizations under them or uh, a lot of Western organizations, the problem with them is that most of them are like most of them are completely unaware of indigenous traditions and they are completely okay to be anti-semitic and they are completely okay to be anti-indigenous and anti-indigenous anti traditions and anti-Hindu or, or sometimes I can use the word anti-Asian <laughs> so um, The most important thing I was talking about uh, the transgender person, uh, uh, especially you know the way the regionalism and uh, periodist people, especially left, who are working in Tamil Nadu, recently they gave caste color to the transgender community and the LGBT community, and the 98 percent of the community project themselves as the left now. Who, who, I mean, not the community, the so called community leaders do that. Not because, uh, because of the traditions here, the inborn values of this land, this land always had a space where these queer people can express themselves in a free manner, which makes uh, India as one of the India is the country with largest LGBTQIA population in the whole world, visible population at least, compared to many Western or European nations. I mean, like not Western again, I mean the American or European nations. So uh, the people here uh, from Tamil Nadu who don't know any history or the tradition, of course, some of them are Christians and Muslims too, they are like uh, going against ethos and values of the constitution by showing the picture of Ambedkar by protesting on the road. So now the LGBTQIA community also started misusing the pictures of Baba Sahib Ambedkar and everyone. You know, people who talk about Baba Sahib Ambedkar never opens their mouth about MC Raja, who's the first SC MLA in the Madras presidency it was a very important person to the commune. I mean, the. So, and the most important thing which happened during the BJP's reign was that they, Vanati Srinivasan launched uh, the very first book on LGBTQIA in Tamil language. Uh, and uh, the very first step was taken like um, the office of Pon Radha Krishnan, uh, uh, you know, um, kind of uh, forwarded uh, uh, the recommendations for the transgender bill to be more inclusive. And uh, 
The National Human Rights Commission of India issued directions on the complaint filed by me from Srishti Madurai to ban forced sex selective surgeries on intersex babies in India. So, uh, intersex babies, as I said, they are not transgender people, but on the day when these babies were born, um, the parents or most of the intersex babies, the con when the condition is visible, when the reproductive organ is, you know, when the unclear, they call it as true hermaphroditism or um, a kind of condition which is, uh, you know, when, the ambig when they have that kind of imma immature, ambiguous genitals, uh, we, we can call it as a kind of medically unnecessary intervention. So on the day one, within a week the baby was born, they are, uh, the doctors are changing the sex of the newborn infants to male, to make them to fit within the binary, you know, male-female structure. At least uh, because, because of the economic values attached to the um, women when it comes to the dowry system and all this superstitious system in Hindu tradition. Because, um, because of that, we had a cruel thing which happened in India called female infanticide before a decade. Even now, it is visible in some parts, very rural spaces. So, but we do need to address the intersex infanticide. A country where female infanticide was there, definitely there is something called intersex infanticide is happening in different parts of India. So, uh, we need to address this intersex infanticide to, because we don't have any uh, national NCP, that is uh, national child policy pertain to protect the rights of intersex babies and um, you know so what the community needs from the government is that uh, you know banning medically unnecessary select sex selective surgeries on intersex infants, creating equal opportunities and inclusive laws and policies etc. So, uh, for this, we launched a complaint with NHRC in 2016. And they have uh, sent a notice to Health Ministry. And in the same 2016, I contested an election in Tamil Nadu as a first openly intersex candidate. And the very kind of transgender bill the discussion started in early 2015-14 itself. Uh, BJP MP Shobha Karanlaje from Karnataka was about to sponsor that bill at the time at Lok Sabha. But uh, sadly that didn't happen. But she was like listening to us patiently about this. And um, the most important case was which we took up in 2014 was case of Shanti Soundarajan. She was stripped off her medal in 2006 because she was, uh, uh, how to put it, maybe in sports, it's not necessary for if suspicion is arised, it is not uh, compulsory for, I mean, it's not compulsory for male to undergo sex verification test to prove that they are male, but it is compulsory for. Uh, women to undergo sex verification test that they should to prove that they are uh, uh, to prove that they are women. So, who gives the authority to decide what is women or who is women? We don't know. And uh, the test itself is unscientific. Ruled the court of arbitration for sports in 2015. Um, Shanti underwent the same sex verification test with different policies in 2006 uh, compared to the 2D Chand who underwent uh, in 2014. So Shanti was banned for lifetime in sports. She won 11 international medals for India. She hails from a Dalit Hindu family and uh, this happened during the Congress tenure. 
people politicized the uh, you know uh, the death of rohit vaimola how many people did really kind of came and worked for the living shanti saundar rajan no one it was uh, vanati shrinivasan who contributed 50000 rupees initially to shanti saundar rajan at the end of the day we petitioned the case of uh, shanti saundar rajan who was stripped of her medal after a gender test to the state and the central government and we launched multiple complaints on behalf of shanti to national commission for scheduled castes and national human rights commission and we initiated justice for shanti campaign which was instrumental in fetching her a permanent posting as athletic coach in tamil nadu sports development authority on december 2016 before that prior to that she was working in a bricklin as a daily wage and congress for name sake you know uh, allowed her to study in a sports institution in bangalore nis but they didn't provide her a job so now we are trying to challenge her case in the court of arbitration for sports there were like more than uh, 30 athletes women athletes who who were stopped from the sports and uh, because of the sex verification tests and different reasons and most of these girls are from you know yes the community and sadly this happened during the congress tenure no one talks about this so the most important thing is that now the present uh, generation of uh, the contemporary activists of course i i'm also from the contemporary generation i believe but the present activists they they never uh, the problem is they they criticize they criticize they criticize just it's because modi's government or most of the progressive laws came during the modi's tenure coming from the intersex you know the nhrc uh, you know uh, sending letter to the uh, the health ministry or to appointing shanti as a coach or the privacy verdict in the supreme court even a political party believes that the supreme court is controlled by uh, you know the pm so the thing is these people who are advocating for the modern lgbtqia community don't have any idea about the uh, the bharatiya bharatiya darshanas or the philosophy from this beautiful indigenous traditions and they are super elitists who studied in harvard to renowned educational institutions around the globe coming back to india to do their own business we we need to do a kind of constructive and productive activism which will bring peace and dignity to people's life at the end of the day what what we do is we are trying to create an authentic handbook on understanding sex gender and sexuality based on the scientific dharmic values for parents children doctors policy makers politicians etc and we are trying to uphold the philosophical values of gender equality and uh, hindu dharma on international arena and we are trying to stop the religious conversion of indigenous gender minorities and to protect the indigenous gender minority native values and philosophies so for this we need your help i mean when we mean hindu it means respect for all forms of life when we mean hindu it should be you know a space without any discrimination of course it was always a space without any discrimination it will be a space without any discrimination and uh, we need people who can who 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 should invest 
in these communities to integrate the indigenous gender minorities with the mainstream society and the tradition which will help the entire community to have a holistic development and growth, a parallel growth with, along with other men and women in the society. <laughs>